American Survival Code is my buddy Matt Tate, and we're gonna set up tarp shelter. So this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. I believe that there's a lot more people out there that should practice this. They should practice it in their backyards, especially here in Florida where we get torrential rains in a matter of seconds. It's a good skill set to stay dry, and it opens up other possibilities to you. We, they're, they're so light, we can craft other necessities off the land mm -hmm. and it, we can use it for sleeping warm. We can shelter ourselves from the rain. There's, it's an endless world of possibilities if you get into some hammock shelters and we're gonna show you a few that we really like. Yep. Um, so typically we can talk forever about different tarp types. This happens to be a sill nylon that I've had for years. I've spent a lot of time underneath this and it's big enough for me and then some um, and it weighs almost nothing. I have it folded up and I have guy outlines already hanked up on there because to me, if I'm using this, I want to be able to deploy it quickly. And if I'm not teaching this, this is something I could set up in a matter of minutes, two, three minutes. Um, I'll typically carry about 30 feet of 550 cord for a ridge line. It just opens up possibilities, but it depends on the situation, how much time I have. Mm -hmm and what kind of pitch I'm gonna be doing. I might not use a ridge line at all, um, but I like to have it with me. It just opens up possibilities. And then especially when we're choosing a site, you know, all the classic things you hear, make sure you're checking above for your widow makers. And a lot of times, especially here in Florida, swampy, mosquito infested Florida, you know, the ground can be an issue. And if I have a longer ridge line, I, I can position myself very easily without much work out of little ditches and divots mm -hmm. if it were to rain a lot. Uh, so I typically at least have 30 feet and I have it speed hanked so it's easily deployable and so I'll set up our ridge line where it's kind of hot out we'll do something like we would really do I'm going to have this nice and high so I have a nice breezy conditions and really um, we're going to set up a little A-frame real quick and kind of talk you guys through it yep. so first things first I'm going to run my ridge line uh, and I'll set it up where it's comfortable to work, but I, I want it to be nice and airy. So with my speed hank, I'll just pull this out, tie my Siberian hitch. Run this over to the other side, and I can always make this higher or lower, depending on the conditions. And I'm gonna do my power cinch or modified trucker's hitch goes by various names, but the reason I choose these knots is because they're easy to untie. And so I can break down camp in a matter of seconds and go on to a new spot with better resources or whatever. And I still have 30 feet of line that's usable mm -hmm. and not eaten up by knots. Um, this happens to be a rectangular tarp, right? And as you can see, I got guy outlines. I tend to try to stay away from bank line, which is, this is tarred bank line. It gets kind of bunched up and sometimes your speed hanks don't work as well as you'd want them to, but uh, it's better than not doing that because if I need to deploy this quickly and these are all a tangled mess and I've had guys that have almost hiked the entire Appalachian Trail come to me with their tarp setups and like, yeah, just show me what you do. And this just opening their tarp ends up being an hour long process or they got to cut out all their guy outlines and mm -hmm. it's, it's not neat and organized. And in my past line of work, that was always a big deal. Um, diving, jumping, dealing with explosives. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to be kind of a Nazi on it, but even in this context, the drier I can remain, you know, yeah. the higher my chance of not becoming a casualty. Because you can hype out in, in warm weather if you're wet. <laughs> but we'll go long ways with our tarp, so we just gotta figure out what's what here. And I see short little lines here. And um, just because Matt's here, and we're forever students, I wanna show him, I want him to show y'all a very useful knot that's super easy to remember. But in real life, I wanna show you like, just because this is already here, I'm gonna take the easy bait and I'm gonna use what's known as a right angle knot. And when, I, when we talk about knots, it's very similar to a language. 
if you know how to tie a taut line hitch, I'm, it's the same motions. It's just in a different context. And so what this does, and I'll even do this slipped so it's easy to untie, is now I don't have to make a Prusa, that's already there. And I can slide this wherever I want and when it's under tension. And, and that's a knot we used to use in the bomb world for certain things too. It's just, I tell kids that and then they go, oh, knots are cool. But so on this end, let's go ahead and show them a Prusa, Matt. I'll go ahead and set up this first part here. This is not life support. A true Prusik, like if we were rappelling off a tower or something, would be tied a, a little bit more complicated than this with like a double fisherman's, but we just need a loop of line. And so just like the end of a balloon, just an overhand knot is gonna suffice. And then we have our material to make our, our friction hitch that Matt's gonna show you. Yeah, hold this for me. <clears throat> So I'll typically take the, the two tails that are hanging down to where you just tied that. And as I'm looking at the line, I bring it from behind there and I'll take those tails and I'll push it up through once. And then I'm gonna come through one more time. I'm gonna pull that down and I'm gonna dress this knot up. And when I say dress it up, make sure that these lines aren't crossing each other. And if I do that, then it's gonna allow this thing to move more efficiently and lock on the way it's supposed to. So it only takes a second to kind of dress those up, make them look nice. But there we go. Now we've got a Prusik knot. Bring this guy through here. And I'm just gonna bring that through the grommet. And we made ourselves a, a toggle here. And I'm just gonna let that fall down and that toggle is going to prevent this from slipping out. Now, because this is a slip, I can pull that and I can pull it pretty tight. I can pull on the tarp. If I want to get it tighter, I can pull the tarp and then stretch that out even more. And now it's even more tight. One thing I like about this system is even if you're using like a chintzy Walmart tarp, it kind of spreads the load on the grommets right. and they tend to last a lot longer, even in really windy conditions and a tight, tarp pitch is one that's going to stay up and not f envelop you in the middle of the night right. when you don't want it to. <laughs> I've had tarp pitches through two hurricanes at our location in Jacksonville uh, that are just now starting to degrade from ultraviolet radiation and come down. But yep. you can do some surprising stuff with tarps. So one thing I want to point out while we're kind of have this in frame is we could have went over the top of this ridge line right i tend not to especially here in florida because when we stake this down we're going to get a low point in our ridge line even if it's super super tight and that low point is generally where we are laying and once this line gets saturated it's going to take the path of least resistance just like electricity and it'll drip on us and I've had students get soaking wet in their hammocks and wonder why and stuff like that. <laughs> so if I went over the top, I would install a drip line for sure. Mm -hmm. And I always pretend like it's about to pour, uh, even if the weather says it's not. But by setting it up in this way, I don't really have to worry about that. I could still do it for safety, but even these Prusik lines themselves are gonna act as a drip line. Mm -hmm. And we can also use that to gather water. Like if, if we wanted to, scavenge some line from here, tire a little Prusik and make it long enough to reach a container into the ground. Now I got an easy direct, instead of just like taking 20 minutes for the rain to fill up a jar, it goes, it funnels it into there. Yep. Um, and so even when you're resting, you can still be actively surviving, you know, looking after your needs. But we've made some stakes and we're just gonna stake this out. I like to have long guy outlines because it, it gives me the possibility for different kinds of setups. Like if I want, I can have, you know, a, a really low angle shelter, nice and breezy when it's hot. Um, and if I don't have the perfect tree to tie off to, or if there is, I got the length to do it. So typically I'll carry about 15 feet in a guy outline. It tends to be my sweet spot. And I have it hanked up nice and neat where it should come right out right, and, and easily deployable. And then I also have more than enough because if we were to stake this straight to the ground, it would take maybe two or three feet. And I got a bunch of 
bank line for whatever I can imagine. Um, but this is a step that it's not rocket surgery by any means, but mo the uninitiated, when they go to do it, it ends up, this is where everything gets sloppy. Now, depending on your type of tarp, you know, when it gets wet, it's gonna stretch and do things like that. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying initially we want a nice tight tarp and all I do to get that is I mind my lines. Like I think about this two dimensionally where the rookie tends to just think about it like, okay, I got to tighten out perpendicular to this, this ridge line. And then there's ends up being a bunch of sag in between the middle where if I kind of hope to see a line going from that tie out point, and this is nice and straight, it's more angular. And so my, where I choose to stake out is gonna be somewhere on this plane versus this. And that's, that's what I typically see to the uninitiated. And it's just, that slaps you in the face, it gets you wet. And Keeps you up with all the noise. You want a, a tight slapping. pitch. Okay, so see, see how you got this nice line right here? And this is nice and tight, that's good. But we never go like full bore because we might have to make minute adjustments because we still have two other stakes we gotta do. Mm -hmm. But same deal, you wanna pass me that baton? Yeah. We're just taking our wooden pegs, trying to place them in a good spot and uh, using a baton as a hammer. I've literally, I've had students that have come to me before on like family trips where they didn't have enough stakes for their tents and stuff like that, where they, they stopped their trip just over that, or you can improvise off the land. And sometimes I've even been in places where the commercial stakes that I had, they weren't holding enough, right. like on a beach where there's all kinds of different places, but you can make these 10 feet long if you, if you had the willpower to and really hold some ground. But so I'm gonna mine my lines, I'm coming out this way, and this would just give me a, a place to place my stake. And there's a multitude of knots that you can use to tighten these up, but I like to use a taut line hitch or also known as a midshipman hitch. And to me, it's the same knot that I tied on the ridge line. Uh, it's just on itself instead of two separate pieces. And so one thing, when it comes to knots, I like to tell my students, when you're learning it, tie it the same way every single time. Like I always come counterclockwise around this. And there's a reason to that. That's how you build muscle memory a lot quicker. And for a lot of these knots, it's to the point where they become difficult to teach because I have to slow down and, and figure out what the heck my hands just did. Cause I'm, it's really on autopilot, but this is a self-tensioning guy outline now that I, if I got to change things up, do whatever, but that looks good. Now we're just going to repeat the process on the other side and we'll have a nice little A-frame. And there's a, so many options with a tarp shelter. It's kind of mind boggling, but there's, there's a couple of tried and true ones that I'll use like a lean to uh, an A-frame and a plow point shelter. But what I want to do is show you really quickly how, quick we can turn this into a plow point and this is semantics here but this is a rectangular tarp and so a, a diamond plow or a plow point as you often hear it technically you need a square tarp for it and if we run it like how i usually do it's called a sibley tent but that's just really getting fancy there it doesn't matter it's super easy and it's even less work than this and we only need three stakes i use it a lot <laughs> 